Good morning. How are you? Well, you know how we do it. Let's begin in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. How many of you guys have heard of Ms. Uh, I think I, I think I have it wrong, but hold on, y'all. Okay. It is so funny how so many names in our uh, like even if you look into genealogy or whatever there's so many names that are the same and you think it's the same person but it's not but thank you Holy Spirit for making sure that we do not get confused okay God is not the author of confusion and that's a good thing that is a good thing. <sighs> okay. So tell me if you have heard of, uh, let me see, let's see, let's see what I can do. Okay. I'm gonna give you a snippet, see if you, if you know what this is, okay. And I want you to know, this is very special to me because um, I was not raised in this way, okay? I was not raised in this way. Um, this music and everything is very new to me. And it's going to make some sense as I go through today's service, okay? So here we go. This was recorded in 1962. You hear that? Okay, if you don't know who that was, that was Miss Bessie Griffin, rest her soul, and the Gospel Pearls, and she was singing a song called Deep River, and what I noticed most about her is that her spirit is not happy. She just looks tired, and she looks sad, you know. And she's singing about a life beyond this life. Now, that brings us to the prayer service. Okay. That brings us to the prayer service. Stop looking at my background. <laughs> okay, now. Okay, so listen. I'm going to try to do this right, y'all. I'm going to try to do this right. Okay, so. There's something about, and and, and I'm gonna tell you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share one more. Uh, I'm gonna share one more thing with you if it's still up. Uh, this is from Black Women Empowered Incorporated, and it says God can do it just like that. <laughs> Type Amen if you believe. And I am clapping and I am going to type a amen because I know that God has already, before we even ask, God
God is able to provide for us. He already has it on the way. Okay. Um, this is what I'm going to do. Because this was obviously an earlier one. So I'm going to go to their page. And... Um, Let me see. There was a prayer that was up. Okay. And the prayer said. Um, see, she's getting it. <laughs> because I responded to it. And she's made some posts since this here. Okay. Because I was saying, honey. There's a, a situation. Here's the one that she did. This was eight hours ago that I responded to. And since then, she has had a change of heart. This is what this prayer service is about. To gently remind each other of God's promises and God's goodness and God's power. God is not um, limited to what we think he is. Okay? This was what... Uh, Black Women Empowered Incorporated uh, posted eight hours ago. Dear God, I'm not asking for money, a big house, or a fancy car. All I'm asking is that you keep me and my family safe and make sure we have enough food on the table. That's it. And I responded, baby, you is talking about the creator of the Milky Way. It's kind of insulting, don't you think? <sighs> you know, it's it's insulting. It's condescending. It's 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 an insult, <laughs> actually. It's like, don't you know who I am? I remember Dave Chappelle having to say to certain people. And they did things, other comedians that say, look, I'm Dave Chappelle, baby. Some people would call the greatest of all time, the GOATs. Okay? And you asking me, can this be done? Can that be done? Because we're talking about the God, the greatest God. And this is what you were saying. I'm not asking for money, a big house, or a fancy car. All I'm asking for, well, why not? Why not? And so, what I did was, went to the Word, went to the Word, right? We seem to think that only a certain one who has been put over certain things can accomplish certain things in this life. Amen? But you have to remember that there is one who even made that one. When all of the sons of God were called into heaven, this one appeared also. And when God said to this one, what you been doing? Where you been? Oh, I've been all up in the, up and through the earth. <laughs> and, and the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job that there is no one like him on the earth? Amen. You think I'm lying? I am not lying, honey. Now, now, maybe my memory fails me. Maybe the Holy Spirit is giving me this as a as a joke. However, let us see. In the Word, we just gonna go to the to the Book of Job. Amen. Job, Job, Job. Amen. When you when you get that, say Amen. They start right off from the very beginning, honey. It says, in the land of Uz, Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys. I think, I think that kind of takes care of the situation about... I'm not asking for money, a big house, or a fancy car. Uh, or, or why not? <laughs> why not? Come on, come with me. He said, uh, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man 
among all the people of the east. And some Bibles say that he was um, Asiatic, which you know, I'm going to leave it at that. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Amen. Pray on that thing, baby. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you clarity to understand what God is trying to tell you. Okay. One day. Skip on down to verse six. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. Receive that. Yes. You you didn't know that? That they be getting together up in heaven? Yes, they be doing that. And guess what? And Satan, I'm going to say it again. And Satan also came with them. Yeah, you know, the one that run all this here, that was given authority. Guess what? Somebody made him. <laughs> you know, the one we pray into. That somebody made all these others, including us. <laughs> he made them, including Satan, the ruler of the air. Huh? He made him too. So who answers to who? And if you go against the greatest God, then he gives you to Satan. <laughs> and the beloved son said, your adversary. The accuser of the brethren. Come on with me now. Come on with me now. Come on. Come on, Holy Spirit. Okay. And Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And did Satan say, who are you to ask me anything? You know, I'm just as great as you. You don't be asking me no question. <laughs> Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Just like the Holy Spirit used to move uh, over the waters. You remember in the beginning how the Holy Spirit used to move back and forth? Mm -hmm. Back and forth over the waters and it was formless. You remember that? Remember that in Genesis? I'm telling you, honey. The things that the Lord, <laughs> come with me, come with me, put your finger right there, put your finger right there in Job 1, and I want you to come with me, come with me on this journey, hallelujah, yes, yes, in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It was hovering. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. What did, what did Satan say he had been doing? Where you being, Satan? Where you where, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. <laughs> then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Now, did Satan say, I've been over here on the earth and I've been tormenting your people? 
Is that was that saying the answer? No. That was not saying the answer. He don't really be bothering us like that. Like a lot of people say that he do. I haven't found any scripture that says that. Okay. So even when he tempted Jesus, it was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And the angels were right there to come and comfort him after that. And you have to remember that he only tempted Jesus after Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. The only people that in the Bible that I know that have become demonized, possessed of demons, possessed of an unclean spirit, possessed of uh, or doing weird things, you know, um, these are people who were not believers. I'm going to say that again. Those were people who are not believers as such. You know what I'm saying? But those who were worshiping God and doing what they were supposed to do, they were, they were allowed to do so. It was their relationship between them and God. And Satan didn't interfere with that until... these meetings go on and God and Satan have these conversations and Satan is the accuser he is the accuser because it's, he doesn't believe listen okay I'm gonna say this a lot of the times that People who do the jobs where they are bombarded with the things that people do. I'm going to give you an example. When I lived and worked in Baghdad, I got the incident reports of what Americans were doing that caused incidents that led to death, that caused property damage and stuff like that. Um, that led me to have an opinion about certain humans because they were always the ones who were in these incident reports okay when you're a person who deal with emergency situations all the time or domestic incidents all the time and it's the same kind of person over and over and over you generally form an opinion and since Satan is the one down here roaming throughout the earth going back and forth on it he sees some things he knows some things he knows about job when god said have you considered my servant job there is no one like him did satan say who that no satan said does job fear god for nothing satan replied he know he sees He's down here in it, going back and forth, looking this and that. And this. He knows. He knows, just like Santa Claus. <laughs> you better watch out. You better not pout. You better not, uh, 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 whatever it is, I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> he knows. He's making a list, checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. You know the lyrics? Ain't this what Satan said he's doing? From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. He knows about Job. He said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. That's what that's what he said. That's what he expects. Because why? Because he's seen it. He has seen it. Because when he said this, this is what the Lord said to Satan. 
The Lord said to Satan, Very well then. He didn't say, Oh, there you go, lying again. You know you be lying. You a liar. You ain't never seen that before. No other human being does that. God ain't say that. God ain't say that. Because Satan has, he's very well aware that when people are blessed and protected and prospered, according to God's word, when they lose all of those things, then they lose their faith in God. Because love is unconditional. Love is unconditional. And many of the persons in ancient times, as well as through black slavery times and all of that, they know certain things. And they know that God is able. Even if you have much from a a material point of view or you have little, you still have God. You're good. You're good. And that there are seasons of uh, prosperity and season of lack. That's just the way it is here on earth. And many believers know that the Holy Spirit gives them that knowledge and that wisdom to know that this is the way that things go. Just like we have the seasons of hot and cold. We have seasons of lack and we have seasons of prosperity. We have light and we have dark. Okay? So, knowing these things, there is a certain kind of a person that when there is darkness, when it is cold, when there is lack... Who will curse God? And Satan has seen this. And God is well aware of that. Right? Right. The Lord said to Satan, You a lie. He did. He said, Very well then. Everything he has is in your power. But on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day, that's when all the stuff came. Job lost everything. Then he says, as Job chapter 1 is wrapped it, wrapping up in verse 21, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. That's where they're saying, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Amen. 22 says, in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Amen. God bless the soul of Job right now. Amen. 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 Okay. Then what happened? Was there only one meeting? I said, they do this here. They do this here. If you read the Bible, it tells you that they be, you know, be having meetings and stuff and Satan be right there because he's a son too he did not make himself boo boo and believe me Elohim was not shocked and befuddled (laughs) by what happened in the garden come with me now children Job chapter 2 on another day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord And Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth and going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Okay. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life.
But now, stretch out your hand and strike his flesh. Listen, listen, listen. Let me get you the point. Satan says, if you say do this here or die, man going to do it. How do we know this? How why would Satan say this? Because he done seen it. He has seen this happen. Okay? He has seen it. Where when it comes down to his own life or his wife, his own life or his children, will he get in front of that bullet? Will he take a bullet for you? Will he lay down his life for you? Will he risk his life to save your life? Many, many, many times, Satan has seen where that answer is, no, no. That's why he makes that argument. That's why he makes that argument. Amen. Skin for skin. Satan replied, a man will give all he has for his own life, for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. I'm telling you, this is only a son can speak to a father that way. Only a child can speak to their parent that way. And usually it is the oldest child who talks about the baby or the family that way. The baby is spoiled. You too easy on the baby. The baby can get whatever they want. You wasn't like that with us. You don't require the same from the baby as you do from us, the older children. That's usually the complaint of the oldest against the baby or the family. Right? Right? Right. That's what it sounds like, don't it? You doing all this stuff for the baby and the baby is not, the baby ain't all that. The baby don't even love you like that. Right? <sighs> the Lord said to Satan, very well then, he is in your hands. But you must spare his life. May I ask you, Do you think that this was really an an experiment? Who was the person who needed to be taught a lesson here? Was it Job? Was it Job's friends? His wife? Was it um, was it Satan? Was it the other angels who are obviously hearing this conversation? Who are watching what's going on? Who is the lesson for? Or is a lesson for us today as we read the account to give us more insight on this family situation. This is a family affair. We are a family. And just like there are some, the firstborn, the secondborn, the thirdborn, it's a family situation that is going on. A situation between brothers, a situation of fight of, of, over inheritance and, and, and positions. It is what it is, right? Not all children love their parents the same. Not every child that you bring into this world and feed and clothe is loyal to you, (laughs) admires you, and adores you. Some children that that come from your body will try to kill you for insurance money, will try to kill you for their inheritance, who will shame you in in these streets I hear, Who will accuse their siblings of this, that, and the third. To try to incite you. To try to incite you to harm them without cause. Their own siblings. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes, honey. Yes, yes, they will. Thanksgiving is coming up, y'all. Thanksgiving is coming up. 
it's going to be some drama. There's going to be some accusations. There's going to be some weirdness. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, honey. I'm praying for you. Let's go on. Oh, it says, then they sat, I'm, I'm down at the end, uh, um, the last verse of chapter 2 of Job uh, 13. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Amen. That's what happened and it goes on and on. Excuse me, y'all. And on. Right? It goes on and on and on. But I'm going to get down to the to the nitty gritty of it, okay? Oh, Lord. The end, okay? After the Lord said, has said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz and Temanite, these are Job's friends, I am angry with you and your two friends. Oh, he did get mad at Job because you have not spoken the truth about me. Oh, okay, as my servant Job has. Okay. So now. Take seven bulls, seven rams, and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. Ah, so God went on to speak to Job's friends and said they had to make sacrifices, okay? My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad and the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Okay. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima. <laughs> you know Jemima. She's on the pancake box. <laughs> come now. Come now, children. You know the dealio. Okay. That's Jemima. The second, Keziah. And the third, Karen Hufford. Nowhere in all the land where they found women as beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so Job died an old man and full of years. Now, if you notice in the epilogue, it didn't say anything about Satan coming back and say, you know what, Pops, you, you right. You right, you right. You right, Pops. There's no more mention of him. And I, I believe it's because, see, even our children sometimes think, think that we're a fool. Okay? They think that we're playing favorites. They think that we're fools. They think that we are some kind of way out of it in our mind crazy so and they know more than we know okay yes our own children feel that way so what does that mean so after job has remained uh who he is that he loves god he's faithful to god he is blameless and he does shun evil no matter who it comes from even his own wife. And no matter what happens to him, he keeps his faith. He keeps his faith. And so 
what does Satan do? Does he humble himself? Does he say, you know what? I was wrong. Does he say, um, you set me up, Pop. Because you knew Job do care about you. But why didn't you just say that to me? Because you have to see for yourself, Satan. You have to see for yourself. Yes, you do see much. Yes, you do roam about and everything. But one thing that you haven't understood is that in this journey that man is making, they don't all get there from day one. But some are further along the path than others. And yes, they do love me. (laughs) And it's not because of all of the stuff that I do, even though I do do many things for them. There are some who are at that place in their development, their spirit, that they do love me and they do shun evil. And it's whether or not they get this, that, and the third or not. But I am able to give them this, that, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, and the eighth. And you just need to respect that. Whatever it is that I do for man is my business. And whatever I do for you is my business. Do you know how many times man has said to me, why don't you just destroy uh, Satan? Do you know how many prayers I get that they just want you to be removed? But I don't. I don't just destroy you. Because man cannot dictate to me about what I do about you. And you cannot dictate to me about what I do concerning man. The reason why I don't destroy all of y'all, because <laughs> y'all get on my nerves, <laughs> is because I understand. I understand the whole situation. I understand the whole situation. And everything that I made, I made the proclamation. I made the proclamation. What did I say? It's all good. It's all good. That's what I say. What I say. I see it. Let there be light. I see it. Let there be a vault between the waters to separate the water from the water. Yes, yes, yes. On the second day I did that. Then I see let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let dry land appear. Uh-huh. And 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 God saw that it was good. Amen. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation. Amen. On the third day there was morning and 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 evening and God saw that it was what good amen and God said let the lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times days nights and years and let there be lights in the vault amen amen and what did he say on the fourth day and what and God saw that it was good good Man says a whole lot of stuff. Satan says a whole lot of stuff. But what God said, it was good. Now, a lot of it, he said, I, 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 I'm sorry that I made man because every, every thought that they think is bad. Right? But then he says, I'm going to remember my people. And I'm going to, you know, because why? Man is developing. The spirit is growing over the journey, is learning, is understanding. And then the more we know, the more you can't help but love God. <laughs> it's just, as, as, you know, it's, it's funny how little babies, when babies are little, they just think their parents are just everything. They just think their parents are everything and they have a, a, a just, they just, recognize you and they just you know get all excited to see you then as they start getting older then they see how some other people may treat you they disrespect you they're condescending to you they talk dirty about you to your kids and make your kids look at you in a different way right 
then the kids get to be teenagers and they start feeling themselves and want to go their own way, want to be independent. A lot of times they may even put their lives in danger because they don't respect what their parents are trying to say. They're listening more to their little raggedy friends, right? They may get married and they li listen to their wives over their parents. Amen? Amen. Yes, they do. I hear people all the time saying that. So a man would leave his mother and father and would plead to his wife and this, that, and the third. And he's supposed to put his wife over his mama and stuff like that. Again, try the spirit by the spirit. Try the spirit by the spirit. God is not a God of division. Anytime that a woman who is a wife who says that she is more important than the mother who who God has appointed to give life to to her husband or you know the husband is saying that he's more important than this the his wife's parents listen to what i'm saying a, a divorce decree can end that relationship but nothing can end the relationship of a parent and their child, not even death. Not even death. Do you hear me? I have a child in the grave. That's still my child. I have a son that is married. That's still my child. A million years from now, the records will still show that I gave birth to that child. And his whole life, he still remained my child. But a divorce decree can end the marriage of anybody. And that's it. They no longer have any authority or say so or whatsoever over a person's life. But as a parent, and that's, that's biblical. And most of the people in the Bible who had respect for their parents, as the Bible says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long on this planet. And if my son had honored me by not doing things that he know I disapproved of, he would be alive today. He would be alive today. Many, many things I never did. You know why? Because I have too much respect for God and my family. There are some things that I know that if Jesse Hera Jose even thought I might do. I'm not doing it. <laughs> you hear me? Because I'm not trying to disappoint daddy. Even though Jesse Harold Jose is gone to the today, honey, there's certain things Miss Colita ain't going to do out of respect for the man that God put into my life. And he wasn't a perfect man by no means. He wasn't a perfect man. But by God, he taught me some things that I use even to this day. Ethics, character, customer service, what business is supposed, how business is supposed to be run, what real friends are, what respect is. I, I, listen, if God say this thing, I'm going to tell y'all a story. You hear me? I'm going to tell y'all a story, okay? <clears throat> Genesis 2, 26, then God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of, in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, this is a blessing, y'all. Ooh. Listen, this is the blessing. Be fruitful and increase in number. 
fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground. Everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw all that he had made it. It was very good. Everything. Very good. And they all served their purpose. They all served their purpose for which they were created for. Now those that are trying to make themselves over, <laughs> make other folks over, that's y'all business. I ain't getting into that. But we're going we gonna to wrap this here up. <clears throat> we're going to wrap this here up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even Satan. <laughs> he does what thus says the Lord. You hear me? And I always had, had the mindset, what my big brother do? Let me tell you, my big brother do. I always respected my older brother. I always admired him. Always tried never to disrespect him or anything like that. Even when he uh, was doing wrong. I never supported my brother in doing anything wrong. Okay? Always have been there. Always have been there. Listen. When it comes to prayers, dear God, I'm not asking for money or big house or a fancy car. All I'm asking is that you keep me and my family safe and make sure we have enough food on the table. Well, bless you. Listen what it say. What God blessed males and females. And it was a huge blessing. Amen. Covering everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It wasn't just the bare necessities, okay? Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. And it says, come with me now. Save me when you, when you get to the, to get it to. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Well, which one of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, go ahead on, testify. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't right. God knows you ain't right, but it's all right. He loves you anyway. You his child. It's all right. He made us all. He says it's good. Now, man who ain't made nobody comes around and won't say this is good and this is bad and this is this and this is this. See, who is you to say anything? This is not your place. <laughs> But brothers and sisters do this to their siblings to try to to try to get God to harm their siblings without cause. And the ones who going around and doing it, they're not the first and they won't be the last. And the only thing that you have to answer is if you which one is you? Are you the one going about trying to <laughs> throw, throw, you know, make make the father upset with your sibling for him to harm them without cause? Questioning their intentions and what they do and say and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> That's what you got to ask your sister, honey. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. <laughs> Let 
Exactly. <clears throat> if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Adonai, Adonai. Mm. As black females of North America, we come before you, O oh Lord, thanking you for your word. Thanking you that you called us good from the very beginning because everything that you have created is good. Thank you for letting us know that when the sons, when your sons come to meet with you, that Satan is also there. Amen. Thank you for letting us know that there are those who will try to incite you against us, who will call down evil upon us and try to get you to harm us, to bind us, to keep us from prospering. But we know that you know our hearts. We know that you hear our prayers. We know that you know all of the ones who come before us to try to harm us, to dissuade us, who even lie on you to us. Amen, Lord. We know that those ones have to come before us with sacrifices. And they have to come before us with gold, silver, money, land to offer to us so that we may pray for them. If they do not come before us with these sacrifices, O oh Lord, then we will not pray for them. We will not pray for them to you, to ask you to forgive them. We withhold our prayers from them until they come before us with all of the necessary sacrifices for lying on us and for lying on you to us. Amen, Lord. Thank you for your word today. Thank you that we know what it is that we have been called to do, which is to pray for those who you have instructed to bless us, to make sacrifices before us. Amen, Lord. Help us to accomplish this mission if they come before us in the manner in which you have designated that they should come before us. Amen. If they do not come before us, O oh Lord, with these sacrifices that you have instructed them to come before us with silver, with gold, with sacrifices, with reparations, for lying on us and for lying on you to us. We withhold our prayers to you in their regard. Amen, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Help us to remain in line with your will and your way. Help us to not feel pity or any type of emotion for those who are in opposition to you, who are disrespecting you, who are dishonoring you, who are lying on you, who are lying on us to you, who are accusing us, who are labeling us, who are judging us. We know that we are not called to pray for them. We are not called to intercede on their behalf. We are not called to be a bridge for those who hate us and who hate you. We repent for every prayer that we have lifted up to the throne on the behalf of those who hate us and who also hate you. We ask that you please forgive us for doing this. Forgive us for praying for anyone and anything that you have not called us to pray for. Amen. We take back those prayers right now in the name of Jesus. 
we repent from doing this and we ask you to be a hedge around us to prevent us from feeling any sorrow for those who are reaping what they are sowing. We ask that our heart not feel sorry for those who have refused to come before us with reparation for lying on us and for lying on us to you and for lying on you to us. Amen. Thank you for your word today, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you. For no other God is like you. You are above Moloch. You are above Baphomet. You are above Lucifer. You are above every other God. And we just thank you that you consider us your own. We thank you that you know and understand us. We thank you that there is nothing that makes you tremble. There is nothing that can make you fall. There is nothing that can make you stumble. We thank you. We thank you for everything that you are. And I'm asking you, I come before you right now, Lord, as a black female of North America, to ask you for everything, <clears throat> everything according to your will, O Lord, O Lord, according to your riches and glory, according to your word, that you just bless us. Bless us, bless us, bless us, O Lord, in every way, in everything, things known and unknown, O Lord for healing, for direction, for all of the material gains, prosperity. Let all those who have spoken ill against us and against you to come before us with reparations, O oh Lord, that we might pray for them, that you might have mercy upon them because they have paid us those reparations. Thank you, Lord. Please, 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 please prevent us from praying for them until these they have come before us with these sacrifices. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your word. In your beloved son, Jesus Christ, we pray. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, honey. Lord, I just ask for an extra blessing upon every black female in North America who is seeing this. Uh, video at this moment in time, an extra blessing be upon you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you so much for watching this prayer service today. I know it went a little bit longer, but it's what the Holy Spirit has led. Um, this is in addition to tomorrow's prayer service, which will also go live tomorrow. Um, as the Thanksgiving season approaches, I'm just very mindful, very mindful that there will be uh, some tender moments uh, coming, but stay in your word, stay prayed up, listen to this over and over and over again. Amen. Let God's spirit rein be reinforced in you, encourage you, build you up. Give you the strength, power, and authority. Amen. Um, know that Satan is a son of God and that he does come before God when the other sons do also. And what happens there? How we are discussed. And know that God is there. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen. I'm asking. I'm knocking. Amen. Even though we being evil can give good to our children, how much more so will Adonai give to us? I receive it. Hallelujah. God bless you today. I'm glad. <laughs> Go for <forth>, y'all. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.